In this video, we're going to take a look at the concept of heat of hydrogenation. Now, there's two things that you've already learned that are going to form our guiding principles for this topic. The first is alkene stability. And we know that if you have an alkene, as you add non-hydrogen substituents to it, like carbons, you're going to increase the stability of the alkenes. So here's a mono substituted, two substituents, um, or di-substituted, be it cis or trans, tri-substituted, and tetra-substituted. So stability increases as you increase substitution. You can also kind of correlate stability with energy, and we can say that the tetra-substituted alkene has a lower energy versus a mono-substituted alkene is higher energy. In terms of the hydrogenation, this is where you take an alkene and add hydrogen gas and a metal catalyst to that, and the hydrogen will add syn across the double bond. And we reduce the alkene to the alkane. They're not drawn in, but if you want, you could draw in the two new hydrogen that were added from the H2. To look at the difference for heats of hydrogenation, what we're basically going to do is compare two hydrogenation reactions. In the first one, we have one butene, which undergoes hydrogenation to give butane. The second one, we have trans 2 butene, which undergoes hydrogenation to give butane. So the same product in both cases. So I've drawn two um, reaction coordinate diagrams that we're going to fill in. And the thing is, the product in both cases will have identical en energy because the product in both cases is just butane. So let's go ahead and put the product in. And again, if you, you know, kind of line those up, hopefully you can see that I put those right at the same energy. Now, if we look at our starting materials, we have the one butene, which is less stable. compared to the 2-butene, which is more stable. So relatively speaking between the two, this one is lower energy, this one is higher energy. So now if we plot the starting material on our reaction coordinate, the less stable one Put it right here. The more stable one should be at a lower energy. So I'm going to put that down just a little bit. So now if we look at this, you can see that these aren't equal in the starting material. So we draw our reaction coordinate. You go from starting material over the transition state to the product. Same in both cases. But now the delta G or the delta H of the reaction is the difference in starting material and product. These are both exothermic, but the one on the left has a greater magnitude. So the one on the left has a larger heat of hydrogenation. Meaning, when this reaction takes place, more heat is released. Um, if you want actual values, for the first example, the heat of hydrogenation of that 
is negative 127 kilojoules per mole. That's larger and more exothermic than in our other case, which is only negative 115 kilojoules per mole. So here there's more energy released during the reaction. So in summary, uh, kind of the take home message here is that less stable double bonds will have larger heats of hydrogenation.